Today I want to demonstrate how to use Refit, which is a REST library that allows us to quickly and easily consume REST APIs. So these REST APIs, it could be your own API that you developed, or it could be some kind of third-party API that you're trying to consume in your application. So traditionally what you would do if you want to consume an API is you would use some kind of HTTP client, make an HTTP request, get a response, read the response, then deserialize the response into some kind of data, and that's a pretty repetitive process. And we're gonna see with Refit, it's just so much easier. So for this demo, I've actually created the API that we're gonna consume. I think I'm gonna have another video where I go over consuming a third-party API because I really wanna make a NuGet package for this one API that I would like to use in .NET. But we got our own API today, and this is the authentication server. So this is from my authentication series where we implement JWT authentication. And then we'll also be making API calls to our data server API, which takes the access token that we get back from the authentication server. So I think this is a really good example because we get to see how headers work in refit. And we'll even implement an automatic token refresh because I think someone had asked for that in the comments. And that is something that is very useful and is something that I implement in my own applications. So let's begin. What are we waiting for? We are first going to install refit. So manage NuGet packages. Let's get refit up in here. Refit. And we actually only need the refit package. We don't need the HTTP client factory extensions. That is used if you want to use this with the .NET Core host and dependency injection. But we're not going to do that here. We are just going to install refit. And now we're ready to get this party started. And actually, before I get into this, I should demo the API real quick. So I got this all set up in Postman. Let's go ahead and start the applications. So we're starting both APIs right here. So we can register a new user. Let's do that. All good, we get a 200 response. Then we can log in with that user. So let's send that. There we go, we get our access token, refresh token, and access token expiration time. And this is gonna be helpful for automatic token refreshes using our refresh token. And then we have a refresh route that we are going to use to actually do that refresh. We can send something to that. Let's get this refresh token and set that in our request body. And there we go. We get an invalid refresh token. Let me try that again. All right, there we go. I think I just copied it wrong. But then we can also log out and this takes our access token in the authorization header. Let's add that real quick. There we go. We logged out. And I guess I shouldn't have done that yet because I want to use my data server and get data and that requires authorization no big deal we can just log in again grab the access token set that as the authorization header and there we go we get our data if we are not authorized then we get a 401 unauthorized so that is the api that we're going to consume i don't know if we're going to go through all of these routes but we're going to do enough to demonstrate the core functionality of refit so the first thing we need to do to use refit is create an interface that we will pass to refit that is gonna represent the endpoint that we want to call. So we're gonna have those interfaces in our project. Let's put that in the folder called services. And the first endpoint I wanna call is my register endpoint. So I'm gonna create an interface in here, the register service. And we're gonna use async away here. So this is gonna return a task. And if we looked at our response in Postman, we did see this didn't really return any data. It just gave us back a 200 okay. So we're not gonna have any kind of result for this task. And we'll just call this method register. And we did have some data that we wanna pass to our register endpoint. And we see that in our request to body, we got all this JSON in here. So what we can do is pass in that data as a parameter to this method on our interface. And we want that data to be put into the body of the request. So we can specify that with body as this attribute here. Let's import that from refit. And now we just need a type here that's going to represent this body content that we want. So it would just be a class with an email, username, password, and confirm password. But if we look at our authentication server and look at our models and requests, we have a register request in here and that has everything that we want. So what we can do is move this register request to a class library in our solution and our authentication server and our client application can both reference that library and use the same class for the register request because we also use this in the authentication server as the body content that we expect from the client. So it makes sense that we would wanna share that. So that's always the same. 
So let's go ahead and create a new project over here, a class library. I think I'll just call this core. And now I already know I'm gonna need all of these requests. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move all of them into core. And I will update the namespace here as well. So we have a register request, a refresh request, and a login request as well. And we can remove those from our authentication server real quick, add a project reference to core, and import that namespace, and get rid of the old one. So we are all good on the authentication server. Now we can use this library in our client application. So let's add a project reference here as well to core. And now this register service can take in a register request as its parameter, and that'll get passed in as the body. So that is perfect, that's what we want. But we also need an attribute here to tell refit what this action is supposed to do. So is it supposed to make a get request, a post request, what endpoint are we trying to hit? So in this case, if we take a look at Postman, we want a post request to the register endpoint. So let's set that up. We can use a post attribute and that is from refit. And the path for this route is just register. So that should take care of our register service. But before we go any further, let's set this up and make sure it actually works with refit. So here in the program.cs, let's use refit, tell it about our register service so that we can call our authentication server. So what we can do is use rest service and we want to create a rest service for our register service, import that what we just created. And now we just need to give it our base URL and we could snag that from Postman real quick. So that is the local host 5,000. Let's copy that. And that's pretty much it. And that just gives us back our register service. And for some reason I called this a register service, even though it's an interface, we got to call this an I register service. Keep up with those naming conventions. I don't know what I'm thinking here, but now let's use our register service and we want to register and let's set up our register request. So in fact, let me just grab this from postman, get all this data and update this. So that's not JSON. And now we do have to await this. So let's make our static void main an async task. Let me delete my old database. All right, so I had some technical difficulties real quick, and that was because I named my core library just core originally, and that was causing issues in my authentication server because it was conflicting with other namespaces that had namespace of core. So I renamed it to core lib, and that works. So I got my servers running over here. And before we test this, let's go ahead and try and log in and we get unauthorized so that user does not exist. But now let's go ahead and register with our client application. And there we go, that all ran. And now back in the postman, let's try and log in again. And there we go, we get a 200 okay. So our register endpoint does work and look at how easy that was. So all we needed to do was just create this I register service and specify the details of our endpoint, such as what parameters it takes in the request and in this case, we didn't need any kind of response. And then we just specified that it's a post request to the register route. So we can continue to do this. We can have a login service. So an I login service, I literally almost just named it just login service without the I again, but these are interfaces. I like to have I in front to denote that. And for this, this is gonna have a response. It's gonna be async again. And this is gonna be, I believe in our authentication server, this is gonna be the authenticated user response. That looks right. So the access token, the expiration, and the refresh token. So that is also gonna get moved to the core lib. Let's just drop that in there, remove it from the authentication server. We'll update the namespaces over here in the core lib. And we got the error response over here too. I'll demonstrate that a little bit later, but this is gonna be the core lib namespace. And then just add that namespace in our authentication controller in our API. So now back in the login service, we're ready to use this. This is going to return an authenticated user response. Our method is just gonna be login. We need some data in the body of our request. So let's import that from refit. And our body is gonna be a login request. We got that in our core lib. And then lastly, this is also gonna be a post request. And this is going to be to the login route. And boom, just like that, that's all we gotta do. So now let's use this in our application we are going to have a login service now create another rest service for the i login service and then we need our host url so just the base url for our api let's put this into a variable so we can reuse it and now we're going to get an authenticated user response from our login service and all we got to do is take our login service and log in and we got to pass a login request that's going to be i believe just our username and password which we have up here let's just copy these down here 
into our request for now. And let's just write the access token to the console. Let's put a breakpoint here so we can look at the full thing. And ooh, look at that. We get a refit API exception, a 409 conflict when we try to register. And that is because this email and username already exists. And on the API, we return 409 conflicts if that is the case. So if we return an unsuccessful status code, refit will throw an exception for that. So we could try and catch that. Let's do a little try catch, throw our register in there, and we want to get an API exception. And I think I'll save error handling for a little bit later. Let's continue with the login service. And there we go, we get our login response. There is all of our data, perfect. So now that we have the access token, I want to actually use it against the data server when we try and get that data that requires authentication. So let's create another REST service over here. We'll just call this the data service. Pretty lame name, but that is all we're doing. This will be a task and it's gonna return a data response. So I have that in my data server API in the home controller. I just have it as a private class. Let's move this into its own file in our core libs so that we can use it in our client application as well. This is just the data response and we'll paste that in here and make it public. Make sure the data server references our core lib and now we can import that response. So all good there. Let's go ahead and use that in our iData service. Import that and we'll just call this get data. And we actually don't have to pass anything in here. There is no kind of request object as we can see in our data server nothing to pass in but we do need to mention this is going to be a git request to the data route so now let's set up our i data service in here another rest service for the i data service and this does not have the same url as the authentication service so i'm going to rename our original base url to authentication base url and we're going to have another base url and this is going to be the data base url and this is on port 8000 i believe and we'll use that down here for the data service. And now let's get our data. So all we gotta do for that is take our data service, get the data, and that'll give us back what we need, except it actually won't because we aren't authorized. We don't pass the access token from the login response to our data service when we call the API. So what we could actually do in the iData service is we could pass in the access token right here. So we could have an authorize attribute and we want to authorize using bare authentication. So that is actually the default. It does that bare prefix for us. And then we just pass in the token here, except that wouldn't do any of the automatic token refresh. So the client of the iData service would then be responsible for doing the refresh, which wouldn't be too cool. We could end up with some code duplication and then the client would also be responsible for passing in the token, which they might not really care about. They might just want to use an iData service and get the freaking data. So we're not going to do this. Instead, what we can do in our program.cs is use a different method here. And what we want to do is manually pass in the HTTP client. So let's instantiate an HTTP client here. And what we can do, just looking at these HTTP client constructors, is pass in some kind of HTTP message handler. So we're going to do that. And this HTTP message handler is going to automatically add our access token to the request. And it's also going to refresh the access token if it is expired. So what we're going to do is create, I guess, a new folder over here. We'll just call this HTTP and we'll call this the auto refresh HTTP message handler. And this needs to inherit from delegating handler which is part of system.net.http. And in this case, we just want to override send async. So before we actually do the sending, what we want to do is take our HTTP request that we got right here, and we want to mess around with the headers, specifically the authorization header, and we want to set that to a new authorization header value where we can pass in a bearer token, but then we need to actually get the access token from somewhere. And the best way to do this, in my opinion, is to create some kind of third party object that's going to hold our access token for the application. And we can pass that in through the constructor. So what I'm going to do is we'll throw this all into a new folder. We'll call this stores and that's going to be the token store. So it's going to store the token for the application. So we can have a property on here for the access token. And now we'll get a token store in our HTTP message handler. So that's gonna get passed in through the constructor. So generate that constructor. 
and then we'll just grab this access token from the token store. So right now we're not doing any kind of automatic token refresh, but we'll implement that in just a second. For now, I do just want to make sure our data service can work. So now we just need to pass in our auto refresh HTTP message handler. So let's set that all up up here, the auto refresh HTTP message handler, and that's going to need our token store. So we can create one of those real quick, import that. And now let's pass our handler into the HTTP client. And then the last thing we need to do is actually set the base URL on our HTTP client. So set the base address to a new URI and we want to use the data base URL. So we hit our data server and that's almost everything except what we want to do is actually set that access token on our token store as the value that we get back from our login response. So let's do that. Grab the access token from the login response. And now we are finally ready to get our data. And we actually get an error here. The inner handler has not been assigned. And actually the reason for this is we're using a delegating handler. We inherit from that as our HTTP message handler, but that actually needs to pass in the inner handler, which we didn't do. So we can just call the base constructor here and just pass in an HTTP client handler. So just the default message handler. Alrighty, so I've just been debugging this for so long, way too long. But if we run this and we try and hit our data server, we get unauthorized. But why? Why do we get unauthorized if we set the authorization header with our barrier token? That doesn't make any sense. And the reason it does that is because we need to not use HTTPS redirection in our data server and that should solve everything. Now, ideally, or really, we could have just used the HTTPS endpoint, but I'm just gonna get rid of it because it makes me mad because I spent so much time on that. But now, try this again. Hit the data server. Let's look at these wonderful headers on the request. We want the headers and there is the bearer token. So we no longer have to spend time here. Let's make sure this works. We should get the data that we want. We got our data response and, and we don't even get to look at it. How disappointing. So here we go. We got the value one, two, three. So finally we have authenticated. So next up, I am going to skip over the logout route because that's pretty similar to this data service route where really all we'd want to do is pass no data. I think for logout, we wouldn't even get a response back. We'd get a new content. So wouldn't even need anything here. And then we would just hit the logout route on our authentication server. And most importantly, we would want to use the HTTP message handler that adds the access token. And next up, we'll do the automatic token refresh. So that is going to need our refresh token endpoint. So we are gonna have a new service over here, the I refresh service. I made this a class, but it should be an interface. And this ultimately gonna be a post to I believe the refresh endpoint. It's gonna give us back an authenticated user response. We get another access token, refresh token, and expiration time. We'll call this refresh. And this is gonna put a refresh request into the body to send up to our API. So first off, let me organize this a little bit. Let's move all of our services up here, get things a little bit organized. And now we're gonna need an I refresh service. So another rest service using refit for the I refresh service. This does not need a custom HTTP client, thankfully. So much trouble with that, but we are gonna be hitting the authentication URL. And now we are actually gonna use this refresh service in our auto refresh HTTP message handler. So let's pass that in, update our constructor, throw the service into a field, and now we are ready to do the refresh. But we only wanna do the refresh if the access token is actually expired. So what we wanna do is get that expiration time onto our token store. So let's get into the token store and we are gonna have another property on here, the date time for the access token expiration time. And then for the refresh, we're also gonna need a refresh token. So we should get that here as well. So let's think about how this is gonna work. We first wanna check if the access token is expired. So we'll have an is access token expired method. We'll generate that and implement that in just a second. And then if it is expired, then we'll refresh the access token. That should be pretty easy to follow. Now we just need to implement it. And actually, I already know this is going to have to be an async task for refreshing it. So we're going to have to await that, which means our send async is going to have to be async as well. 
can't forget that. So checking if it is expired, we can just take our token store and check if the expiration time is less than or equal to, I believe date time UTC now, that should do the trick. And then for refreshing, what we're gonna do is take our refresh service and refresh. This takes a refresh request. So we can pass in the refresh token and we got that in our token store. And this gives us back an authenticated user response. And now using that response, we can just update all the values on our token store. So we got a new access token, and then we got a new refresh token, and then we got a new access token expiration time. So that means our token store is gonna be updated, and then we'll add the updated value to our bearer authentication header that will get sent up to the server in this case, because we fixed our annoying issue. But I believe we should be good to go. The last thing we need to do is actually set the refresh token on our token store when we log in, as well as the access token expiration time. So we're gonna have to get in here to test this. I think what I'm gonna do for now is just return true for the access token being expired, just so that we can get into our refresh service. So here we go, we are going to refresh. Let's do it. And we get our authenticated user response. So the refresh was successful, hooray. And there we go. So we didn't have any breakpoints here, but we should have gotten our data. Let's make sure. Give it another go. We refresh. And then we still successfully get the data. But then lastly, if I bring back this token expiration check, then we are not going to refresh because we do not need to. Our access token is not expired yet. So pretty straightforward there. I like this approach where I actually get the access token expiration time back from the server so that I know when to refresh it. I've seen some implementations where they'll like make the request and then check for a 401 unauthorized and then do the refresh and then make the request again. But I like this approach because we get to save a request and we don't have to deal with any errors. So now lastly, I want to show off what we can do with this API exception so we can get some more information with that. So if I go into my authentication trailer, my actual API for registration, if the email we register with already exists, then we get this error response as the content for our API response and we get our email already exists as the error message. So what if I want to get this error message in my application? Well, if we take our API exception, we have a nice little get content as async. So I want to get my content as an error response in this case. So I'll deserialize it for it. It's actually async, so we need to await it. And now we can just write the error to the console. So I actually have error messages here. This is a collection. So I'll just do a little first or default here. So now we should be able to get meaningful errors back from the API. Oh, and this actually doesn't work because my error response does not have a default constructor. So you gotta have one of those. And for this, we'll just set our error messages to an empty list. Let's try this again. So there we go, we get our error back and we write that to the console username already exists. So obviously I'm just using error messages here, but for my own application, I'd probably have like error codes that I could translate into my own meaningful error messages from my own application. So that is the power of refit. You can easily consume APIs by just setting up these interfaces and then in your program, you can create REST services for those interfaces that'll call the desired URL. And then you don't have to worry about dealing with HTTP clients manually, reading responses, deserializing data. Refit just takes care of that for us. And we did see how easy it was. We were creating these interfaces pretty quick. And then lastly, I'll shut off how you can add an authorization header and also implement an automatic token refresh, which is pretty useful for most applications and something that I usually do in my own application. And then lastly, I demonstrated a little bit of error handling. So overall, Refit, great library. I'll leave the full documentation in the description because I'm sure there's just so much more that I didn't get to cover, but this is the core functionality. I'll probably build onto this tutorial more by consuming a third-party library. And I think for that, I'll use the .NET Core generic host just to demonstrate how this works with dependency injection. But overall, Refit, great Rust library. So hopefully you can apply it to your own application. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave it like or subscribe for more. Thank you.